All right, so my name is Wei Dai. I'm a research partner at Bank Capital Crypto. Uh, we're a VC fund, um, crypto native. Uh, anyways, um, okay, so what I'm going to talk about today is uh, not about zero knowledge proofs. And let me open by a question. Uh, raise your hand if you think zero knowledge solve all the privacy problems in the blockchain space. I see one hand. I see two, three. All right, well, if you didn't raise your hands, maybe, um, well, maybe you know better than I do, but I don't think zero knowledge solves all the privacy problems, so let me explain why. So um, let's think about blockchains. So what are blockchains and computation, right? Uh, well, blockchains applications, uh, everything is a computation on a blockchain, right? So Ethereum is a public state machine that's replicated uh, via some consensus mechanism. And so what is the, what, what is the same machine? The same machine is something that uh, keeps a state and has some transition function and transition states through transition function, right? And what can be thought of as state machines? Blockchains and smart contracts, right? So everything on Ethereum, all the smart contracts are state machines. Okay, what if we want to do state machine transitions uh, with privacy? Well, let's try to use zero knowledge. How are we going to execute a state machine in zero knowledge? Well, we're going to execute it off-chain and only prove the execution that is correct on-chain, right? So I'm not going to show you the details here, but more or less it's going to look like this picture where every single state, you know, is a different color, and your zero knowledge update is going to uh, essentially link one color to another color, right? So here, uh, on-chain, we'll have three different states. And suppose that a user wants to interact with the state machine, and uh, they each in independently generate a different proof, right? Linking state two to some state three. Now, if one proof is processed on-chain, let's say the, the left one, the blue one here, what happens is that the second transaction of the, of the second user is now invalid, right? Because it's, the proof um, is, is going from the same like state two, but now it needs to link to state three, right? So, so that's the problem with executing general state machines in zero knowledge off-chain. You run into risk conditions. Okay, so this problem is actually been observed over the years in many, you know, many different ways. But basically, um, you know, the, the story is that either you do a transparent on-chain computation, which, you know, w that we do on Ethereum, so you have no privacy, but you have the, you know, benefit of a shared state that everybody can have access to. Or, on the other hand, you have a zero-knowledge off-chain execution, uh, and you kind of have the flipped, uh, you know, uh, benefits and, and kind of downsides, which is that you have private inputs, but to state that's not shared between anyone, okay? So uh, we're basically somewhat at odds with you know, these two properties, so we can't really get both. And my talk is about how to get both properties. And I call that um, uh, confidential share state. So how do we get confidential share states on a blockchain? And the answer is fully homomorphic encryption, or FHE for short. Okay, so what is homomorph homomorphic encryption? Um, this is, you know, brief intro to cryptography. Uh, so, uh, so this thing is here is called a commutative diagram. Okay, so suppose there's a message, and fix a circuit C here. We can compute the circuit on a message to get C of M. So that's this error over here. Okay, um, an FHE scheme allows you to kind of do this thing, but with three different steps. Okay, uh, and so first. Let's take our message. Instead of computing the function, we're going to encrypt it. Okay, so everything that's done here is encrypted. You cannot see what's inside, right? So, uh, you know, this is what kind of goes through in your TLS channels and stuff like that, right? You first encrypt it, and then you kind of run this evaluation function, which takes in the circuit, right, and this uh, ciphertext to get another ciphertext. Okay. Um, well, have we done here? Well, we haven't really done anything useful, right? But let's actually try to decrypt this thing again, right? Uh, a FHE scheme allows you to essentially, um, so if you decrypt this, and this, you know, and this thing is, it's, uh, you know, it actually works, it means that you actually get back the, the result of computation, okay? So what have we done here? Instead of doing computation in the clear, we can first encrypt, do the computation, and then decrypt, 
Okay, so so this thing is like really really sick, right? Because um, it allows you to do computation on encrypted data. It's like you know the holy grail of you know computing uh, and privacy, right? Um, so you know this thing has been discussed ever since like the 80s, um, but like you know recently we ha like only within the past uh, about 15 years do we know constructions of this thing. Okay, so it, there's still a single point of failure here, which is the de decryption key, right? So like anyone holds a decryption key can get the data. So, so the idea is we're going to like move everything on chain to be encrypted stuff, right? So, but we don't want a single person to be able to decrypt. So the, what do we do? We're going to add um, threshold cryptography. We're going to secret share the decryption key to every single validator, okay? So now we're going to have the guarantee that you can only reconstruct what's inside if, um, if K out of the N validators say so, okay? All right, so, all right, so what can we do with that, uh, you know, with such a threshold FHG scheme? Uh, it turns out we can basically, uh, you know, do confidential same machine replication on chain and release any information, uh, you know, that we want to the, to the public. Um, okay. So let me kind of wrap up by uh, telling you about the work of PESCA. Uh, so PESCA, it's uh, well, short for Privacy Enhancing Smart Contract Architecture, which is kind of a, a blueprint to unify the three types of computation, right? So we have transparent on-chain computation, zero-knowledge off-chain computation, and this on-chain replicated confidential computation. PESCA is a framework that tries to unite the three things, you know, putting the three together. Um, so very briefly on what kind of what the challenge is here. So the challenge is that if you want to make this thing practical, uh, you, you have to really, really think about efficiency. As it, so it turns out FHC is really, really slow. And uh, it's way slower than ZK even. So you want to push computation to zero knowledge as much as possible while doing you know, the bare minimum amount of like shared computation in FHC. Okay? And uh, I'm going to kind of connect the two components using threshold decryption. So it's, it's going to look, at, look like this. Where on the left hand side we have some type of like ZK shorted pool, which is really standard. We're going to um, also use zero knowledge to kind of in, uh, encode inputs into this FHG computation module on chain. And then we're going to decrypt stuff and then put it back into the you know, shorted pool. Um, so this is actually inspired by uh, the penumbra state model. I encourage you to kind of look it up. It's, it's actually one of the um, cooler projects that's you know, being implemented right now that have, that, that's a private DAX. Okay, anyways, um, and in the work, we also extend this to uh, two some publications, uh, one of which is uh, essentially a dark pool, uh, a privacy-preserving constant function market maker, and the other one is a first, first prize privacy-preserving privacy auction. Okay, so let me end by a short conclusion, uh, which is, uh, you know, what are the three points I talked about today? Privacy um, is... You know, privacy, it's, it's really important in blockchain space. And zero knowledge is not a full solution. And to get confidential share states, we need something that's fancier. And in this talk, I presented one option using FHG. And I encourage you to check out, check out the work of PESCA. And the link to the paper is in this QR code. Anyone that they didn't raise their hand? No question. Everybody understood <laughs> that. Or there you went back with Wei after the talk. Thank you so much, Wei, once again.